Our objective today is to use the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2. Basically what the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2 says is this. If we take the der derivative of an integral, we end up with the function itself. It's almost like taking the square root of x squared. Yes, the square root of x squared is equal to x. So since the integral is the antiderivative, when we take the derivative of the antiderivative, we end up with f of x. And this is just putting that in um, calculus terms. Basically, this is what has to happen in order for this, and some people call this the first, some people call it the second, so don't get caught up in that. This is just a different part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. But basically what has to happen is you must be taking the derivative of an integral. The second thing is that you're, whatever you're taking the derivative with respect to must match the upper limit. The lower limit must be a constant. And the new variable is going to match the derivative um, of what we were taking it with respect to. So let me show you how this works, and we're going to start with the long way. So if I were to do this, the first thing I would do was integrate cosine of t dt, which we all know is negative sine of uh, t dt. I'm sorry, it's positive sine of t. And I'm evaluating that from x to negative pi. So evaluating that, I get sine x minus sine of negative pi. And now I'm taking the derivative of that. Well, what's the derivative of sine x? It's cosine x. And the derivative of a constant, sine of negative pi, is 0. So I am left with the derivative of sine x, which is just cosine x, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if I had used the fundamental theorem of calculus, I would have taken the derivative of an integral. I see that I have the derivative of an integral. The derivative matches the upper limit of integration, and the lower, immigrate, lower limit of integration is a constant. So then I just could have looked at that and t determined it was cosine x. Okay? So I don't want you to do this the long way. I want you to always do it using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let us practice. Okay, in this first example, we have to see. Um, are we taking the derivative of an integral? Yes. Does dx match x? Yes. Is the lower limit a constant? Yes. So because of that, all I, what I'm going to end up doing is taking the function and re, every place I see t, replace it with x, x. So this is my answer. Okay, now this one is a little different. Um, I am taking the derivative of an integral. However, my upper limit is x squared. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule because my upper limit is not simply x. It's x squared, so I'm going to use the chain rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then I'm going to treat this like the rest of it. So the derivative of d dx from 0 to x of cosine t normally would have been cosine x. In this case, it's cosine x squared. But then I have to take the derivative of x squared. And that's my final answer. OK, we're going to do the same thing. We notice something different here. My upper, lim my upper limit is a constant, and the lower limit is, a, uh, is the variable. So I'm going to have to fix this. I'm going to use the property that tells me that I can switch my limits and just make it negative. So now it fits the description. I'm taking the derivative of an integral. My, um, I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, which is my upper limit of integration. So everything, all I'm going to do is just every place I see t in that expression, I'm going to replace it with x. And the negative is because I reverse the limits. OK, so this problem is slightly different. If you notice that there are 
variables at the lower limits and the upper limits. So what we're going to have to do with this is once again use a property and this property that we're going to use is going to allow us to break this into break this up into two integrals. Okay, it doesn't matter what constant we use. Um, we could use anything. I chose zero. We could have used 27.3 if we liked. It doesn't matter what constant we use. But we just have to break this up, and we know that um, between 2x and x squared, there has to be a zero somewhere in between there, or some constant in between there. So we've broken this up, and now we're going to be able to use the fundamental uh, theorem of calculus on each part. So notice on the one to the right, we had to reverse the limits, and it has become negative because we had a, um, the lower limit was a constant. We needed that lower limit to be, um, I'm sorry, the lower limit was a variable. We needed it to be a constant, so we reversed the limits, and that gave us the subtraction sign. We used the chain rule on the left because we had to take the uh, derivative of x squared, which gave us 2x. And on the right, we had to take the derivative of 2x, which gave us 2. And so simplifying this, this is our final answer. OK, what I would suggest that you do is you try the, these on your own. And I've given you the answers and also the answers to the free response questions. But just take a moment and try these um, on your own. And we will talk about this when we get together. So these are the answers to the free response questions. And this last one was uh, a little bit complicated. So try it, and then we can talk about it when we get together. OK? I will see you when I see you.